I feel your pain. That's a phrase that we often use to assure someone that we empathize with them. It's very encouraging when it comes from someone who cares about us, but it takes on even greater significance when we know that they have gone through similar circumstances. Jesus is able to sympathize with our weaknesses and temptations because he knows exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. He understands our pain and has dealt with it at the very deepest level. As we'll see from our scripture in Hebrews today, chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Jesus was fully God, and he was fully human. And throughout centuries, people have tried to get their mind around that idea and explain it. Some have tried to explain it away. Some dismissed his divinity. Others diminished his humanity. But the biblical scriptures teach that both are true and both are equally important. Christ shared in our humanity and he understands our experience, which keeps him from being distant, out there, and untouched by our problems. Whether it's depression, loneliness, heavy-heartedness, failure, or anger. God knows what we're going through. He's not a God that's way out there. Jesus is personable, and he's a faithful and merciful high priest. He's in touch with our reality, and he's involved. Which is our key spiritual insight. By fully entering into the human experience, Christ understands and dealt with the deepest issues of our lives. He struck right at the core of what creates this misery in our lives. Particularly the lure of temptation, the twisting effect of sin on our lives, and the fear of death. First, he understands and he dealt with the fear of death. Death is called the last enemy, the great enemy, the king of terrors. Death is hideous and frightening. It's cruel and unusual. Death is abnormal. It's not our friend and it just isn't right. Death is not the way it ought to be. It's a penalty for sin that was visited upon the first man and the first woman in Genesis chapter 3 when God said, The day you eat of it, you will surely die. And Satan came along and tricked humanity into death. And now he continues to enslave us through the fear of death. But Jesus stepped in and he did something about it. Backing up to verse 9 of chapter 2, it says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Jesus conquered death, and he cannot die again. Death no longer has power on him. 
and the benefits that he earned has been given to us and applied on our behalf. The sting of death is gone, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Death has been swallowed up by triumphant life through Christ. Now, we often have two opposite mistakes and responses when we are confronted by death. One is despair, and the other is just to shrug it off. We should grieve, but we should have hope. And we should wake up from denial and discover the true source of peace. Also, let me clearly cl clarify that there are not endless recyclings of life. It is not rebirth after rebirth after rebirth until we get it right. No, Hebrews 9.27 tells us it is appointed to man once to die and after this comes judgment. Secondly, Jesus understands and dealt with the twisting effect of sin. If your idea of sin is just moral wrongdoing, then you have a very narrow and limited view of what sin really is. And your idea of just keeping the rules may cause you to miss out on the relationship aspect with God and how sin distorts that. When we sin, we are turning our back on God and living according to our own desires. We're rebelling against Him by living without reference to Him. It's self-determination against our Creator. Sin has distorted God's design for His creation. And it keeps us from connecting to and deepening our relationship with God. It's twisting and distorting life at every level. But in verse 17, Jesus made atonement for the sins of the people. Atonement means Christ's work in his life and his death to provide for us salvation. Because sinful humanity and all of its rebellion and breaking of that relationship needed reconciliation with a holy God. And Jesus provided the way to come back into a relationship with God. One day, Jesus took the twelve aside and he told them, We're going up to Jerusalem, and everything written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He'll be delivered over to the Gentiles. They'll mock him insult him, spit on him, they'll flog him and kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. Jesus untwists the curse of sin through his death on the cross and his resurrection so that we enter back into relationship with God by turning from our sin and putting our faith and trust in Him. Now thirdly, Jesus understands and dealt with the lure of temptation. Christ is able to help those who are being tempted, it says in verse 18. Temptation's strong, and we only really resist temptation and know how strong it is the longer we go in that temptation. In other words, a person who gives into temptation after five minutes does not know the degree that it would be at one hour or one day or one week except Jesus. He is the only human that took on the full brunt of temptation 
because he never gave in. He never sinned. Christ is the only one who never yielded to temptation. Hebrews 4.15 tells us when it says, He has been tempted in every way, just as we are, but he did not sin. Jesus understands the intense lure of temptation that comes into our lives. But there is a way of escape that's always available in order for us to endure it. Jesus gives us, on the spot, emergency responses to temptation. It just happens like that. How do we respond? Well, he tells us to flee. Just get out there. Get out of the way. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Also, we bring to mind what is the lie that's being told to us in our mind. And we remind ourselves of the truth of the Word of God and how He says what is real and what is reality. And then we come boldly to the throne of grace in prayer to find help in our time of need. All of those help us in that moment of response in emergency when we're being tempted. But Jesus also grows our maturity over a period of time so that we can endure it. We saturate ourselves with the Word of God so that we can respond as He did when Satan tempted Jesus by saying, It is written, and knowing that that Scripture has entered our life and our mind, our heart, and our emotions. And we make a practice of faith and righteousness in order to stand firm. We walk in the Spirit and so we do not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And as those things are built into our life and we go through life, it makes our responses to those lures of temptation more firm and enduring and complete. So I say to you, Jesus cares. He understands. He entered into your experience. He is able to help you respond to temptation, to the fear of death, to that twisting effect of sin. I encourage you, be reconciled to God. Live in relationship with Him. Bring Him your pain. Live in trust.